It's rare that we see influencers who are universally loved and praised for their positive impact on the world. Ironically, these creators are the most vulnerable, because even the smallest controversy can fundamentally destroy their reputations. This couldn't be more true for Brother Nature, who earned millions of followers on all of his social media platforms from his wildlife content. Brother Nature was known for being kind-hearted, philanthropic, and loving towards animals. But he made one tiny mistake at a sandwich shop in 2019 that would do irreversible damage to his reputation and career. Even five years after this incident, people are still commenting on his Instagram reminding him that they did not forget what he did. Today we are going to analyze the downfall of Brother Nature, who could not figure out how to handle his biggest controversy and determine if he was a victim or if this incident just pulled the wool from our eyes and exposed who he truly is. And even though Brother Nature was known for being kind and wholesome, his social media career began out of jealousy and envy. One summer day in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Kelvin Pena was with his cousin playing video games. After coming out victorious, Kelvin went outside and was met face to face with a deer. Intrigued by the large animal standing in his cousin's backyard, he called him over. His cousin nonchalantly explained that the deer had been coming over regularly and becoming somewhat of a family pet. Kelvin and his cousin then interacted with the deer, feeding it while documenting the experience on Snapchat. Instead of being impressed by his cousin's ability to interact with wildlife, he felt envious and jealous. He wished to be as docile as his cousin. In a crazy set of circumstances, Kelvin found a deer in his backyard the moment he returned home from his cousin's house. Envious of his cousin's pet deer, Kelvin wanted one for himself. He enticed the deer with whatever food he could find, and when the two locked eyes, he knew they were best friends. Excited to showcase his newfound friend on social media, Kelvin needed to give the deer a name, and he chose the name Money. I'm out here eating crackers with my pet deer, his name Money. This name, combined with the reason why Kelvin became interested in wildlife, potentially foreshadows the future downfall of his career. Kelv posted the video of him meeting Money to Instagram, instantly catching people's attention. Seeing the positive reception, he decided to upload the video to Twitter. Within 24 hours, the video had thousands of likes and retweets. People thought it was hilarious and could not stop sharing it across the internet. It was a surreal experience for Kelv, who at the time could not comprehend why this random random video of him interacting with this deer was intriguing to so many people. At age 17, his social media profile skyrocketed, and he continued posting videos of him interacting with various deer in his neighborhood. Keep in mind, his name was not Brother Nature at the beginning. It was Cold Game Kelv. But his whole world changed when he introduced everyone to his newest deer family member, Canela. Uh-huh. Y'all know what the heck going on, man. Got my dope Canela out here. We got the organic cut carrots, the banana on deck. Canela was good, girl. You know, I got you. Canela, don't eat the banana like that. Canela, let me peel it for you. Canela became an iconic part of internet culture, to the point where a lot of you probably refer to any deer as Canela. Canela became a staple part of his brand. Still, five years later, people love and miss Canela. Kelv unified all the deer in his neighborhood, calling them the Deer Squad. The Deer Squad featured Money, Money Jr., Canela, Lil Bambi, Tequila, and Lola, and anytime he would meet another animal, he would give them a name and add them to the family. Since the United States is actually overpopulated with deer and they all look very similar, the odds of seeing the same deer twice seems pretty low. So people were shocked that he had such a deep and personal connection with a select few deer. In the beginning, his attitude and demeanor was totally different than what he evolved to. Instead of being fun-loving and free-spirited, he had a cocky and braggadocious attitude. Just to let niggas know that we don't play games out here, my nigga. It's another one walking up right to me. You my nigga, bro. What's up? You hungry, my nigga? Some Pringles, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. We do this deer shit out here, bro. Yeah, it's that good shit. It's that good shit, money. Eat that up. Damn, bro, them antlers looking clean. You just got them hoes cut today? My son, fresh. Here you go, eat that. Yeah, money. What's up? It's gang shit around here, money. His attitude, flexing his deer friends like they were foreign cars, made him seem like the funny kid everyone knew in school. He even dabbled in making music. Have you heard of who I am? Who is it? Around my town. They call me the man. 
Although he possessed seemingly zero music talent, the shtick of using animals for music video content has actually worked for a few rappers after him. Rapper The Mexican OT went viral last year for holding a chicken while rapping and his buddy riding a horse behind him. He also had Blake Fades who constantly went viral for rapping on a farm with some cow friends behind him. It's these types of subtle content strategies that people don't focus on that can really take an artist's career to the next level. I cover these types of music marketing strategies as well as give you my personal creative of content ideas in my weekly newsletter, Tuned In. Tons of artists out there want to learn how to get more attention on their music, but they don't have the time to do the research. Let me and my team do the research for you. If you want to learn about my best $0 TikTok promotion strategy or how to build a diehard community of fans, Tuned In is right for you. Just type in tunedin.marketing in your browser or click the link in the description to sign up. You also get a 25% discount if you sign up yearly instead of monthly. As Kelv's likes and views exponentially Exponentially increased, he realized he could turn these silly videos into a business venture. While feeding the deer, Kelvin repeated the phrase, everybody eats, which eventually became his slogan. Everybody eats, man. Fast money. You already know what's up. You heard? <laughs> Kelv's good friend and rapper Slater convinced him to start making merchandise as a source of revenue, while Slater's manager, Nikki, came up with the idea of starting a non-profit organization, Everybody Eats Foundation, and used Kelv's upbringing in a single-parent household as the inspiration. Last Thanksgiving I came up with, I was like, so what can I do to help my community? So I went to uh, the food pantry with, with a piece of paper, and I asked the people as they, as they were getting their food, like, hey, would you be able to afford a Thanksgiving meal this this Thanksgiving, and the people that said no, I took their name down, wrote their address, and then I made a little promo video telling people, like, hey, you can go to my website, donate some money so we can feed these families during Thanksgiving. People were convinced we made the right person famous. Some people go viral for the wrong reasons, but this dude has my respect. This dude has a good head on his shoulders, and he has a good heart. Dude is a blessing on this planet. Kelv was an internet sensation that you could not hate, and this brought him big opportunities. He partnered with the production company called Public Cinema Club to premiere a short-form documentary called Deer Squad at the 2017 Sundance Film Festival. Then a production company called Super Deluxe was impressed with the reception of the documentary and threw him on a plane to Los Angeles to film more content where he interacted with other exotic animals. Kelvin the Deer Whisperer learns life lessons from wild animals gained millions of views on Facebook. In the comments, a random user referred to Kelv as Brother Nature, and the name stuck. In September of 2017, he chose to drop out of school and move to Los Angeles to become Brother Nature full time. However, this was seemingly a bad decision for him. Through his videos, Brother Nature really seemed to bond with the local deer. He talked about how much he loved animals and cared about their well-being, even referring to the deer as his friends. But when the moment came for him to profit from his success, he left them behind. In LA, Kelvin steered away from what made him famous. He completely abandoned the deer-related content since he was no longer living in Pennsylvania. He purchased a baby goat, which became the main focus of his videos. Hey man, I got a very special announcement, man. I just bought myself my first pet goat. We lit! His name Bentley, man. He be riding clean in the Bentley. Bentley! Why do you be flexing like that, bro? From here, Brother Nature pushed out a variety of different content. He even began uploading vlogs to YouTube. However, his upload rate was not consistent and the views barely reflected the success he was receiving on other social media platforms. He focused a little bit more on posting his lifestyle in LA rather than animal-related content, which may have made him seem less genuine. Brother Nature was randomly dragging this goat around LA and treating it more like a pet. He failed to realize what made him so interesting in the first place, the lore behind all the deer and the wholesome sharing of food with them. Noticing that his views were dropping, Kelv decided to move back home to Pennsylvania in May of 2018, just eight months after living in LA, although he claims he moved because of the toxic environment in Los Angeles. After he returned home and started uploading content with the deer in the area, he saw a career resurgence. Him being back with the deer was where he belonged. Fans were indulging in his life with Canela and the deer squad again. A lot of the deer even had their own Instagram pages. Brother Nature was back in his element, and on top of the world. He grew to well over 1 million followers and garnered even more fame than before, but some controversy was about to tarnish his reputation. In October of 2018, a few months after Kelv's viral comeback, several controversial tweets resurfaced in which he used anti-black and anti-semitic language. He was 12 and 13 years old when he made these tweets, but they still had an effect on his public reputation. The story was covered by various major news outlets like the Huffington Post, Business Insider, Daily Mail, and dozens more. 
more. Kelv's squeaky clean image was tainted and he lost several bookings and brand deals at the time, including a potential appearance on Dr. Phil. He posted a note to Twitter apologizing for his language and moved forward. Some people immediately forgave him since he was so young, whereas others unfollowed him forever. From there, he was seemingly back and forth from LA and truly traveling all over the country. Brother Nature did not fit the image of your typical wildlife personality. Typically, these personalities are unapologetic conservationists who spend all their time in the wild. They also typically attract political attention, often shining light on many of the various laws and regulations that allow humans to destroy animal species in the environment. Kelv liked to travel the world, party, and live an upscale lifestyle. Sure, he discussed his conservation and charitable efforts, but he also posted himself rocking designer clothes and flexing luxury cars. He even dabbled in modeling. Also, his close friendship with Slater makes it seem like he was interested in indulging the lavish life of a rapper. It was unclear what his intentions were. Was he trying to be a serious wildlife personality? Was he trying to make silly videos with animals for social media? Or was he trying to make money on the internet and this was the only thing that was working? Because it was now the end of 2019 and Brother Nature kind of just seemed like any other influencer who hangs out with celebrities and has this little side hobby of posting about animals. Like the dichotomy of him being a wildlife influencer but then wearing brands like Prada and other designers who use real animal skin and potentially abuse animals for profit in their products lost him respect to real conservationists around the world. But it was one night in Miami while he was living the high life where his whole career was about to change for the worse. In December of 2019, Kelvin visited Miami, Florida for a beach cleanup event. He was partying heavily every night at various clubs, on a week-long bender. On the night of the 6th, video surfaced on Twitter depicting him being violently hit and kicked in a sandwich shop as bystanders looked on. People on social media initially assumed Kelv was attacked unprovoked, and an outpour of sympathy erupted. How could someone possibly beat up sweet old brother nature? But as more details emerged, they started to believe he was the one at fault. Kelvin went into La Sandwichery, drunk and saw there was a line and wanted to leave. But he claims an employee invited him to skip the line and sit down. But then when he skipped the line, the manager saw him and started yelling at him and demanding him to get out. Then Kelv refused and said there was a misunderstanding. Two patrons who were eating started filming the commotion from across the restaurant. Chico, don't nobody know you, bro? <laughs> Kelv went over, demanding them to delete the videos or else. They made it very clear they were willing to fight him and told him to back off. He pulls out his phone and says this. Dead man, dead man. Kelv then leaves the restaurant before getting into his car. And he has two options here. Leave the restaurant and accept the fact that it's not worth it to fight two grown men who were filming you during an extremely mild misunderstanding, or go back in there and fight them to prove only let people film you without their approval. The video then cuts to him getting beat up in the parking lot, so evidently he chose to fight, but he lost, and now his ego was shattered. So he decided to run back into the restaurant after his first beatdown and earn himself a second, much, much worse beatdown. I don't even know how much of these clips I can show because they're pretty brutal. Like, he's being kicked in the head and everything. He woke up the next morning and tweeted, I know there's a video of me getting jumped. Everyone in the pizza shop literally just watched with their phones out and did nothing. Oh well. He initially received a ton of support and looked like the victim, but once the security video footage was released and Keemstar reported on the situation, everyone realized it was him who was in the wrong and instigated the entire fight. Put his set up. He went to fight, and he even he ripped up my shirt. My shirt got ripped. If if you see, I had to. My shirt was all ripped. Okay. He grabbed me. He was just. He doesn't. He can't fight. I guess. I don't know what. That's his problem. That's. I don't know. I don't know who's problem. That that's his problem. <laughs> well, I mean, when people it, are drunk, people like to fight. I mean, that's like a that's like a common thing. And obviously, you know, he appeared pretty intoxicated from the videos but now judging off how viral his old tweet controversy was surely this story was going to be even bigger news but something much larger and unfortunately sadder happened the next day rapper juice world sadly passed away just one day after brother nature's sandwich shop squabble so media coverage shifted away from him and only talked about this tragedy i mean don't get me wrong people were still running to his comment section and calling him pathetic a punk playing the victim for starting a fight the internet you 
universally agreed that he was being belligerent, started the fight, lost, and then tried to act like he was innocent. His posts often had a few people stealing the top comment by saying, we didn't forget. This tweet went viral a couple weeks after saying, brother nature want to handle every animal except for the elephant in the room. Since Kelv was clearly in the wrong, a simple apology of just saying that he was drunk, acted like an ass, started the fight, and got beat up would have likely gained him a lot of respect. It's hard enough to get beat up after starting a fight, but admitting it and apologizing to the world is also difficult. Instead, he just did nothing. He ignored the controversy. He just kept posting consistently about his charity work, spreading awareness about environmental issues, collaborations with celebrities, and of course, his lavish lifestyle. And to be honest, this kind of worked for him. Sure, he had a slight dip in engagement, likes and views, but once the pandemic hit, the world had much bigger problems. We would later found out that the reason behind Kelv's downfall was because of his internal struggles with how he felt he handled the situation. In an interview on No Jumper in 2022, which was three years after the incident, he says that he should have apologized, but he ignored it out of fear and that fear slowly ate away at him. That interview came out though? Cause I haven't- No, never, no, that's what I should have did. Oh, but then okay. like something told me like, like I think then fear came into play, you know what I'm saying? Like nah, just wait till you do something first. Wait till you do something first. Like come out with that big project, you know what I'm saying? Cause right. the goal always been like, have like a TV show or some shit, you know? Yeah. Some mainstream stuff or just have a show, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what I always wanted. So I'm like, maybe you should just get the show first. But then I think I, I became afraid to start making decisions because mm. I ain't just make that one. You know what I'm saying? And just come clean like as a person, like as a human. The fear and uncertainty of what the public thought about him slowly ruined his career. His posts slowed down, then the pandemic hit and slowed everyone's lives down. And then he just kind of turned into a regular influencer, posting fit pics, modeling, doing random brand deals, occasionally posting a video with an animal once in a while. Then he went on a year long hiatus until March 28th, 2022, where he posted a photo with the caption, retired. His page lost that spark and personality it used to have. He stopped smiling in pictures and combined them with cryptic captions like, die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Then in February 2023, he said in a caption, retirement going crazy. It's not necessarily that the controversy ruined him because the public canceled him and decided to stop supporting him. It's that he, as a man, felt like he had handled the situation wrong and couldn't feel that closure for himself. It then made him question his own intentions and career path in the first place. Was all of this just for money? Was it for clout? Did he genuinely have a mission to save and protect wildlife? There are still people in his comment section today, five years later, saying they will never forget what he did. But these types of trolls will always exist and you have to just ignore them. I don't think people actually care that he picked a fight and lost. It's really his brand as as a whole that was too middle ground, unfocused, and unclear. Like it was easy to understand when he was just a kid showing love to his local wildlife. He could have transitioned to something like the Urban Rescue Ranch, who's run by a YouTuber named Ben. Ben runs his own farm, rescues animals, gives them silly names like his kangaroo named DaBaby or his prairie dog named Big Ounce. Ben documents their daily lives and his viewers develop relationships with the personalities of these animals. Kelv's content was always just handsome, nice guy meets wild animals. He never took a serious enough effort to become an expert in the wildlife field, because from there he could have collaborated with celebrities and educated them on the importance of wildlife conservation or something like that. His shtick just kind of ran out. He did not evolve, and the failure to address the sandwich shop incident ate away at him and ultimately accelerated his downfall. 